in Treibo. Adatare Dei. Welcome to Catholic Conversations. This is your host, Adrian Fonseca. I'm here today to talk to you about the brown scapular in Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Uh, you see, the feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel just passed. It was on the 16th of July. So uh, if you're watching it on the day that it comes out, um, then it would have been just over a week ago that the, or just under a week ago that the brown scapular uh, or the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel was celebrated. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about where the devotion to the brown scapular came from and uh, what does it mean for you and I as Catholics today? Um, should we have devotion to this um, and what are the promises attached to it? And so we're going to jump in and I did uh, and I'm going to talk to you about um, the devotion, the history of the devotion, saints that have promulgated it, miracles associated with it. And to preface it, uh, we're going to have an entire episode one day talking about miracles. Now, the there's a lot of controversy in the modern era about miracles. A lot of people just don't believe in miracles for some reason. They believe in the physical world, but they deny the metaphysical world. And so we're going to have a day dedicated to miracles. And so. Uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to assume that you believe in miracles, that believe that miracles can happen and that they do happen, uh, even if they don't happen often. So uh, that's going to be an assumption I'm making during this video. I believe in miracles and I uh, and I believe that our Lord uh, allows our lady to um promulgate miracles throughout the world today, as long as it does not contradict his divine will. So we're going to go with that presupposition, but I can't wait to spend a day and talk about uh, miracles and uh, why miracles make sense. So the, the essence of Mary's promise is that those who wear the brown scapular uh, piously will, grant, uh, will be granted um, by Our Lady either a final perseverance in the state of grace or the grace of final contrition. That means that Our Lady will either uh, keep you in the state of grace when, uh, at the hour of your death, or she will uh, give you contrition of heart so that way you will make a good confession before your death. It must be added, though, that she will not grant the gift of final repentance to obstinate sinners who sacrilegiously use the scapular as an excuse for sin. That means that the brown scapular is not a magic charm. You can't just wear it and say, oh, now I have a get into heaven free pass. The brown scapular is not a magic charm that you wear and magic happens to you and you have good luck. It's not a good luck charm. Uh, so do not think of it as a good luck charm. It is a sign of a devotion that you have to our blessed mother and to our Lord. So such unfortunate souls uh, who will wear the brown scapular, who are obstinate sinners and use it as an excuse for sin, they uh, rid themselves invariably of the holy garment and die without the consolation of its promises. So uh, this it's important to keep the brown scapular on and to have devotion to it. Even if uh, you aren't perfect in your devotion, there are levels of devotion that you can have to the brown scapular. Now, let's talk about what this brown scapular is. I've been talking about it, the promise attached to it, and I keep using words, um, and now I need to explain it to you to make sure that you are on the same page uh, with me. So the brown scapular is, that what a scapular is, is a garment. So people, uh, if you've ever seen a religious sister or a nun or even uh, some uh, brothers, they have uh, their outfit, which is their habit, and part of their habit, um, there's a cloth that hangs on the front of them and behind them that stretches all the way to uh, almost to the floor that goes uh, to the base of their feet or to their ankles ish. And that garment is a color that represents their order. So for Dominicans, it's white for Carmelites, Carmelites, it's brown for Franciscans. It's also brown for Benedictines would be black. Um, there are various different scapulars for different orders. The brown scapular is identified with the Carmelite order. And so this scapular is a sign of devotion to, uh, to the order and to our Lord. Uh, 
And so the scapular originally uh, is part of the habit. And the reason why it's called a habit is because it's referring to a habit of life, of the way you live your life. And so you would wear your habit to show devotion to that way of life. And so the scapular was not to be removed. In fact, the scapular would, was worn to bed and it was always worn. So the brown scapular, um, specifically speaking, uh, disregarding the other scapulars because those all have their own devotion, but we're talking about the brown scapular today, which in my opinion is the most important scapular, even though there are many that you can have devotions to. So the brown scapular is a, as I was saying, is a garment that you wear over yourself and it shows devotion to our Lord and to our lady, especially the brown scapular. So this garment is two pieces of brown uh, wool hung over the shoulders for lay people like you and I, uh, we wear it over our, we wear a small version of that. And so the, the version that lay people wear is exact same uh, piece of wool that's worn over the shoulders. Only it's very small and can be worn under the clothes, over the clothes, or in between your clothes. Like if you have an undershirt, you can wear the brown scapular and then your other shirt. It doesn't matter as long as it is two pieces of, of wool, uh, some square piece of wool, and then attached with a string that goes all the way around and is not disconnected, has to be completely around and is worn over the shoulders. Now that uh, is a small version of the scapular of the of the Carmelite order. And it's a tangible sign of the Blessed Mother's love and protection for her devotees. So anytime we kiss the scapular devoutly, uh, whenever we wake up in the morning, we should kiss it when we wake up. And uh, whenever we put on a new one, if the other one is broken or is worn out and we want to replace it, you kiss it before putting it over your shoulder and you... Um, and you're reminded and you remind our lady and you ask her and you say, preserve me this day from sin and the occasions of sin. So you can repeat that to yourself as you're holding the brown scapular and you kiss the brown scapular in the morning. Preserve me this day from sin and the occasions of sin. So it is in doing that that um, traditionally we associated with getting a 500 days indulgence. So uh, the whole wide concept of indulgences is a little complicated, and we might do a, a whole podcast on indulgences. But to summarize the idea of 500 days indulgence, what that refers to is typically um, there are different actions that a monk or a, a person could do that was associated with receiving indulgences. And uh, the Pope in the church has set up these uh, certain devotions and assigned a dev- uh days of indulgence that you receive from it. So it's a misconception that you would hear 500 days indulgence means 500 days off of purgatory. What it really means is 500 days doing X, Y, or Z. Um, and so I'd have to do uh, more research to see what specifically it associated with, but I know that it does, it does associate with doing an action. It is associated with 500 days of doing X, Y, or Z penance. And so you are getting a 500 days worth of doing X, Y, or Z as a penance. So for instance, if you were to, I don't know, fast for 500 days, as an example, I'm not saying that this is what it is, but I'm saying uh, as an example, if for instance, you were saying, uh, I could fast for 500 days, or I could kiss the brown scapular and receive the exact same indulgence. That's the kind of, um, of devotion that the brown scapular has and the importance that it has, that it was associated with a 500 days worth of indulgence. So every Pope, Every single pope since the year 1280, uh, since AD 1280, has worn the brown scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So that shows you its importance in the tradition of the church. Every single pope since 1280. And that means, uh, and so uh, I don't know about Pope Francis. I'm not, I have looked it up and I couldn't find him addressing it specifically. But a lot of times popes will wear their brown scapular underneath their clothes so we can't see it. The reason why we know Benedict had one is because he spoke about it on occasion. And the reason why we know John Paul II had one is because when he was shot, he uh, we saw it because they took off his clothes to have surgery on him and they saw the brown scapular. He wore a ginormous one. Um, so the every single pope has been wearing the brown scapular since 1280. So the so the scapular is a uh, is a devotion in the Carmelite order is an order that's been around for a very long time. In fact, if many people will actually say that it is the oldest order of all time. Now, the tradition of the of the Carmelite order 
Uh, they claim to trace their lineage back to Elijah. That's right. Elijah from the Old Testament, Elijah, that Elijah. So uh, you may have heard the story, but I'm going to tell you the story again. You can read it yourself in First Kings if you would like to see the, the story. So the story goes that Elijah and uh, was the he was the prophet of God. He's the same prophet that ascended to heaven on a fiery, a fiery chariot. And so the Israelites had turned away from God. They had turned their backs on God and have turned to Baal, Baal. Baal is a pagan God. And the and so Elijah um, prays that there's a drought. He prays that, there, that they have a drought in order to try to spur the Israelites back to the faith, to chastise them for their disobedience and their unfaithfulness to God. And so Elijah challenges the priest of Baal. And so the priest of Baal had about five, 450 um, priests. He had over about 450 priests um, that were dedicated to Baal. And they had, in, um, in, and Elijah was the only prophet of uh, the one true God, of the God of Israel. And so he challenged the 450 priests of Baal to a test of their God. And so Elijah says, how about we both kill a bull and we lay it down on an altar and we pray that God sends down the fire from heaven and lights the fire so that way we may have a sacrifice. Now, uh, Elijah says, you know what? Y'all can go first. I'll let y'all go first. And so the priests of Baal, all 450 of them, they prepare the great uh, feast. They slaughter the bull and cut it to pieces, set up the altar, cut the wood, lay down everything, set it up perfectly and have it set up. And they start praying, calling down to Baal, asking Baal to send down the fire so that way they can light up the uh, sacrifice of the bull. And so they keep calling on him, calling on them. And Elijah says to him that you are calling on your gods. You are calling on your gods and they are not listening. They're not, they don't hear you. Perhaps you haven't spoken loud enough. And so maybe you should cheer louder. Maybe you should pray louder. And so again, the priests of Baal start crying out all the louder, crying out in vain crying out saying, gods, the gods, but all come down and send down your fire upon the bull. And so Elijah says, uh, jest at them. He jokes with them and messes with them and says, cry with a louder voice for he is a God. And perhaps he is talking or is in an inn or on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. And so they cried out in a loud voice and they cut themselves because that is uh, something they, that the priests of Baal would do is, uh, in order to get the attention of the gods. It was they would cut themselves. And so they were cutting themselves with knives and lances and they were covering the sacrifice with blood and, cut, and bleeding all over the place. And yet there was no uh, movement from the sky, no movement from their gods. And after midday had passed, so they started this in the morning and after midday was passed, and they were prophesying and uh, nothing was happening. So finally, Elijah has, has backs them down and tells them, you know, now it's my turn. Let me try. And so he goes to the bull and he kills the bull, slaughters the bull, cuts into pieces. He takes 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And he built the stones as an altar to the name of the Lord. And he made a trench for water of the breadth of two furrows round about the altar. And he laid the wood in order and cut the bull in pieces and laid it upon the wood. And he said, fill four buckets and not like these little pails, but like those huge jars, fill four of them full, full with water. And so remember that they're in a drought and he says, full, fill four buckets full of water and then pour it over the burnt offering. And they're like, what? Wait, wait, wait. You are trying to start a fire and you're trying to sacrifice this bull and we are in a drought and you want us to fill four buckets full of water and pour it over the bull that you're trying to light on fire. That makes no sense. And the, and the reason why Elijah does this is to make it all the more impressive. And so he, so the people come and they fill it with buckets and buckets of water and they pour it over the burnt offering, pour it over the wood. And it's so soaked that the water goes down and fills the trench that he had just built. 
And so they did it a, a first time and then a second time. And so they uh, did it a third time after three times, four buckets full of water, three times over it. And, um, and that is a, actually a reference to the Holy Trinity, though Elijah didn't know this at the time. And so the water runs about the altar and the trench is filled with water. And now is a time to him to pray down, to offer a holocaust to God. And so the prophets come near to Elijah and Elijah yells out to our Lord and he says, O Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and Israel, show this day that thou art the God of Israel and I thy servant, and that according to thy commandment, I have done all these things. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may learn that thou art the Lord God, and that thou, thou hast turned their heart again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bull and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So yes, God sent down the fire and the fire was so intense. The fire was so bright and burning that it not only did it consume the bull, it also consumed the stones and the wood and the dust and even licked up all the water that was in the trench, uh, evaporating it all. And so after Elias, Elijah uh, saw this, he took the prophets of Baal and said, don't allow any of them to escape. And he had them all killed. All the uh, people who are worshiping Baal, all the prophets of Baal, all the priests of Baal, all 450 of them were slaughtered that day. So um, it was that was uh, this was all done. Where exactly? This was done on the Mount of uh, was on was done at the Mount of Saint uh, Mount Carmel. Um, and so the Carmelites and the Our Lady of Mount Carmel reference back to this as the place where they, um, it was a place where they have their lineage. And so to fast forward a little bit, um, uh, Elijah, uh, passes down his authority to, uh, Elisha. So Elijah was the, was the great prophet and Elisha was his, uh, servant and his, uh, apprentice and ends up taken over after Elijah was ascend, was assumed into heaven on a fiery chariot. And so the as he was ascending into a fiery chariot, he throws down his cloth that he wore upon him and to, throws it down and Elisha picks it up. And he used it as a sign that he is the prophet that's to uh, secede Elijah. In fact, when he uses this cloth, he hits it against the water. The water is separated, so he is able to walk upon the water, across the water. And so we see this idea of a cloth, a brown cloth that is passed down in order to have that associated with miracles, that is associated with the Mount, uh, Mount Carmel. And so these things are all associated together. And it is the uh, prophets that follow Elisha, Elijah, sorry, that follow Elijah, that um, build themselves a community there that are followers of Elijah. And it is said that after um, the, after Pentecost, the uh, monks, the not the monks, the uh, hermits that were upon Mount Carmel that were there from the, that time onward, it was them who were the one of the first people to be baptized into the Catholic faith after Pentecost. And so the Carmelites actually traced that lineage back to them. And it was uh, only over into the 1100s where they leave Mount Carmel and come to the Western world or come to the rest of the world. And they become the order of Carmelites. You see, at the time, they were they pretty much stayed on themselves. They were hermits and remained uh, that way until the Crusades, whenever they started being displaced from the land. And it was in through that um, that wickedness that displaced them that actually God made good out of it and had the Carmelites spread throughout the entire world. And then finally, uh, St. Simon Stock was given the brown scapular by Our Lady. And so we'll talk about St. Simon Stock in a little bit. Um, but to go back to the brown scapular, the scapular, um, let's talk about that for a second because the brown scapular is important to everyone, not just Carmelites. You see, the Carmelites uh, have a special devotion to the brown scapular because it is their scapular. But because Our Lady uh, has given it to all people, has given it uh, to everyone, the, the, uh, she said whenever she appeared to St. Simon Stock 
It shall be a sign of salvation, a protection in danger, and a pledge of peace. Whoever dies wearing the scapular shall not suffer eternal fire. And so the two great founders of religious orders, St. Alphonsus Liguori, who is the founder of the Redemptorist Order, and St. John Bosco, who is the founder of the Salesians, both of these guys uh, were devoted to Our Lady of Mount Carmel and wore her brown scapular. Now, you may be asking, like, how do you know that they wore the brown scapular? How do you know that they had this devotion to the brown scapular and to Our Lady of Mount Carmel? And the way we know is actually pretty awesome. You see, when they died, they were both buried in their vestments and in their scapular. And so many years later, their graves were opened and the bodies uh, and the sacred vessels, vestments, sorry. So the bodies and the sacred vestments that they were wearing were all turned to dust. But the brown scapular, which each was wearing, was perfectly intact. The scapular of St. Alphonsus Liguori is currently at display in a monast- in his monastery in Rome. You can go and see it today. In fact, if you go look it up online, the scapular of St. Alphonsus Liguori, uh, you will find a picture of it online and you can see that it is still intact to this day. So there are so many miracles associated with our with the uh, brown scapular. And I'm going to talk to you about a few of the miracles. Um, and their miracles range from uh, spiritual conversions, which are the most common uh, miracle associated with it. And I think probably the most important, but also physical um, and spiritual protection. So uh, a priest in, uh, in Chicago area was called to the bedside of a man who had been away from the sacraments for many years. And the man was hardened. His heart was hardened. And the man did not uh, want to receive the sacraments. In fact, the priest says that the man did not want to see me. He would not talk. And so the priest, uh, let me read you what the priest wrote. He said, then I asked him to look at the little scapular I was holding. Will you wear this if I put it on you? I asked nothing more. He agreed to wear it. And within the hour, he wanted to go to confession and made his peace with God. This did not surprise me because for over 700 years, Our Lady has been working in this way through her scapular. And so some physical miracles to associate to you, to give to you. Uh, there was a house that uh, was amongst, I forget where exactly. I have to go back and see if I can find the exact place that this happened at. But there was a uh, a terrible wildfire that was happening and uh, and they and every house around the um, every house around this house was being consumed by fire. And whenever the uh, residents of this house heard that there was a fire and saw the fire burning up the houses around them, there was nowhere for them to go. Immediately they run and they get a brown scapular and they wrap it around the um, the doorknobs of the front door and the back door of their home. And um, Oh, okay. So it was in 1957 in Germany. So it was in uh, West Baden, Germany, or West Baden, Germany, if I can pronounce German words correctly. Um, but there was a, a great fire that was happening around, and they put the um, the brown scapular on the doorknobs of their of the front door and their back door, and sparks were flying all around their house. And then, uh, but their house was remained unharmed. And so, within five hours. 22 homes were completely reduced to ashes all around them. And their house alone stood undamaged amidst the destruction. And so the hundreds of people came to see the house and they saw that Our Lady had saved the house and the people who lived within the house through the intercession of the brown scapular and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, so we know that there is a great um, devotion, great devotion to the brown scapular uh, is a amazing power which was gifted to Our Lady to give to us. And so will we take advantage of it um, to talk to you another story about someone who was saved from getting shot? See, in France, there was reported a town um, that was under siege in 1622. You see, in 1622, there was a war going on and uh, against the king of France, who was at the time Louis the 13th, and the entire army was being under siege. And the, the one of the officers uh, received a bullet wound in the chest and the wound should have been fatal. 
but the uh, wound actually, the bullet pierced the clothing. There was holes in his clothes, but as the bullet hit his brown scapular, which he was wearing underneath his clothes, the bullet flattened out. And so the, uh, without doing, so it didn't do any damage to the officer at all. It was like he was wearing a bulletproof vest. The bullet goes through his clothes, but then flattens against the brown scapular. So astonished by the miracle, the officer told everyone around him and those everyone around him looked and were astonished by it. And the miracle was so talked about that it reached Louis XIII's ears. And so he came and he went to go see what happened for himself. And after examining the facts very carefully, he was convinced of it by his own eyes. And he wanted to dress himself in this heavenly armor. And so he had the Carmelites enroll him as a member of the confraternity of the Brown Scapular. Another story was a conversion at sea. This happened in 1845. In the summer of that year, an English ship, King of the Ocean, uh, was the name of the ship. It was on its way to Australia. And so as it was going through, it all of a sudden found itself in the middle of a hurricane. And so the wind and the water was throwing the ship around and the water was battering against the side of the ship. And there was a Protestant minister on the ship with his wife and children. And the other passengers were also on the, there were other passengers on the ship as well. And they all struggled to the deck to pray for mercy and forgiveness uh, because they assumed and they, uh, they really knew uh, that they were, their time was up, that they were going to die. And, but on the ship was a young Irish man. His name was John uh, McAuliffe. And seeing that the, there was like there was a very timely time where people were probably going to die, he took off his scapular that he was wearing around uh, underneath his shirt, and he made the sign of the cross over the raging waves and threw the brown scapular into the ocean. And at that very moment, the wind calmed, and one more big wave crashed against the boat, bringing with it the scapular, which was thrown into the sea and it landing right before the feet of the young man. And the only person that witnessed this was the Protestant minister. He saw the whole event happen. And, and, and so like moved by it, uh, Mr. Fisher, the minister, saw this and started questioning the young man about what just happened. What did he just see? And he told him about the Holy Virgin Mary and about her brown scapular. And Mr. Fisher, the Protestant minister, and his entire family became Catholic because they knew that it was only by Our Lady that they were saved. And the Catholic Church was the only one that had this protection. And so they became, they joined the Catholic Church and received the brown scapular shortly after landing in Australia. Another story was a plane crash. There was a plane crash that happened um, and almost nobody survived uh, except for one young lady. See, this one young lady in 1955, survived the crash. In fact, her clothes were burned, her skin was burned, her clothes were practically ashes, but her scapular was not touched by the flames. And she, of out of 27 passengers, was the only one to survive. And she was wearing the brown scapular as she held it in her hand. So you see, the brown scapular is an important devotion that has great um, promises, great miracles associated with it. In fact, I want to tell you of a story of great grace that happened to a young soldier. So in 1834, a young soldier from France had so much sorrow in his life that he decided that he wanted to take his own life, to kill himself. Uh, And he figured what he would do was he would consume poison and then go to the hospital and die in the hospital and people would be un- unaware of what happened. They wouldn't know that he died of a, of a poison. They would think that he died of some strange disease or something happened, but they, they wouldn't consider suicide. And so he consumed the poison because he uh, did not want to um, be thought of a coward. And his name would be uh, blackened because of his cowardly sin of suicide. But the hospital... Um, did not let him in because he did not have an administration pass because he was a soldier. And so he had to go home. So the soldier was actually saying, okay, fine, I'll just go die at home. But then he heard a voice telling him to go to St. Peter's Catholic Church and confess to the priest there. So the soldier went to the church and started knocking on the door of the priest that was there at St. Peter's. And he asked the priest to hear his confession. But the priest, it was been a long day and it was already late, um, had told the man to wait. 
He said it was already late in the afternoon. He needed to eat. He hadn't eaten all day. But the soldier had pleaded with them and begged the priest to say, Father, there was no time. There's no time to wait. I need to go to confession now. So the priest entered the confessional and the penitent confessed that he had just poisoned himself. Now, the confessor uh, told him and forgave his sins, forgave him for this uh, sin of, of uh, suicide. And the priest, uh, the, the priest told him that, the, that he needed to go and, um, and take himself to the hospital. And so the priest, uh, with the permission of the penitent, uh, saw him outside of the confessional and brought him to the hospital. And so the, um, so the hospital immediately gave him an anecdote to the poison that he took. Uh, but while they're preparing it, they realized that the sick man um, didn't have a pulse at all, that he became deathly pale and his eyes became misty and that they knew that he was going to die. He was going to die at that moment. But so the priest started begging uh, for mercy upon this poor penitent. So he threw himself on the floor and started reciting the litany to the Blessed Virgin. And he begged her. And at the first invocation of the name of Our Lady, he sensed the pulse of the dying man return. And then a short while later, he heard the soldier say, Oh, my good father, my father, pray, pray some more. And he let out a breath and said, Holy Mary, pray for me. And soon the consciousness of the, his, the, consciousness of the priest of the uh, soldier returned and the priest uh, did not want anybody to talk about it because um, he, he didn't want anybody to think that it was by his prayers that he was saved. And so the, the priest was like, so what, what pious practice have you taken? What marvelous thing have you, are you devoted to that would, uh, that has saved your life? And the priest and the uh, soldier said, uh, my father, I have not said any prayers in a long time. But having reflected for an instant, he realized he was wearing a brown scapular. He said, here is the only sign of piety that I have preserved. And the priest immediately exclaims, ah, my friend, I am no longer surprised by the miracle which just happened. It is Mary who protected you. It is her that you owe being alive. And so the doctors who checked him realized that he had um, been, had gone five hours since taking the poison, that the antidote, it was actually useless because he should be dead after only two hours. And so our lady preserved his life, preserved his life that he would make it to confession. And then in order to show the great devotion and to show the beauty of this promise, he allowed him to live. He allowed him to live in order to show this devotion and to show that this is a true devotion. And this happens. So, the uh, sign of salvation, the thing that was happening here is that we have to accept the scapular because St. Simon Stock uh, was given that promise that it will be a sign of salvation, a protection in danger and a pledge of peace. Whosoever dies clothed in the scapular shall not suffer eternal fire. We should even give the scapular to non-Catholics. We should give the scapular to everyone because even if they not, are not formally enrolled in the brown scapular, because only Catholics can be formally enrolled in the brown scapular, and even if you're not going to have a great devotion to the brown scapular, um, it is enough that they wear it, um, that it may have a conversion of their soul. With their co- cooperation, a conversion of their soul may occur. And so Our Lady will bring conversions to those who wear it and ask your friends and your family that are not Catholic, that are not, um, they're not against the church. Tell them to wear it and say one Hail Mary a day. That's it. Just one Hail Mary a day and wear that brown scapular. And, um, and Our Lady will move the, per, that person to repentance, to remove that person to conversion of heart and soul and mind. So it's good enough that they at least wear it and at, and at best that they say a Hail Mary, um, at worst that they just wear it and that Our Lady will move their hearts to conversion. And so hopefully they will have a devotion to the brown scapular and they will become Catholic and they will be enrolled in the brown scapular and they will receive the promise that Our Lady has promised uh, that has given to the brown scapular and to those who wear the brown scapular. So a story 
that happened was that an old man uh, was rushed to the hospital in New York City. And he was unconscious and dying. Um, and the nurse noticed that this man was wearing a brown scapular. And so he, the, the nurse called a, a priest. And so the priest came to the dying man. And when the dying man became conscious, he spoke up and said, Father, I am not a Catholic. And the priest asked him, why are you wearing a brown scapular? And the man says, I promised my friends to wear it. And the patient um, explained that he would say uh, that he said a, a one Hail Mary a day. And so the priest told him, you are dying. Do you want to become Catholic? And the man said, all my life, I wanted to be one. And at that moment, the priest baptized him, gave him the last rites, and he died in peace. And so it was through the brown scapular, our lady took that soul to heaven underneath her mantle, underneath her scapular. So we must ask people, this is like, this is two lessons here that we need to ask people whether they want to be Catholic or not. Like how many times do we ever ask people if they want to become Catholic? Um, so many people may be converted simply if you just ask them, ask them, have you ever thought about becoming Catholic? Do you want to become Catholic? And then again, it shows the power of the brown scapular that our lady will move in their hearts and in their lives, that they will convert and their lives will be saved that their souls will be saved. So we have to promote the brown scapular. And if you are not wearing the brown scapular, you got to get one and you have to uh, wear it. Um, You can go to pretty much any church and just yell out, "Uh, does anyone want to give me a brown scapular? And I guarantee you there'll be someone there. that will be like, here, I'll give you a brown scapular or here, here's my number. I'll let me call me and I'll get you one. Um, So, There was a um, young woman. So talking about spiritual protection of the brown scapular, there was a young woman who was she was preparing herself to enter religious life. And she made her general confession to um, St. John Vianney. And so he was a cure of ours because he was so um, uh, because he was um, such a great confessor. So many people came to him. And he would be able to read their souls and be able to tell something about them that they did not reveal. And he was able to move so many people to penitence. And he was in the confession for hours upon hours upon hours, Uh, said to be in confession the entire day sometimes, hearing people's confessions because he knew that they, that was the way to get to heaven, that that was the way that they were, their souls were going to be saved. And so this man, the, um, the cure of ours, St. John Vianney, he, uh, was the the girl who was confessing to him, making a general confession. And we'll talk about general confessions another time. But this girl, she was surprised to find out that the saint clearly knew certain hidden details about her life, about her past life. And a portion of of their conversation um, really points out to us something very important. So uh, this is the conversation that they had between one another. St. John Vianney says, You remember, my child, a certain ball which you attended a short time ago. She responds, yes, father. He he says, you met a young man there, a stranger, elegant in appearance and of distinguished bearing, who at once became the hero of the feat. And you wished he would invite you to dance. You were vexed and jealous when he preferred others to you. She responded, you are certainly right, father. And he says, do you recollect that when he left the assembly, you thought you saw as he walked two small bluish flames beneath his feet, but you persuaded yourself that it was an optical illusion. She responds, I remember it perfectly. He says, well, my child, that youth was a demon. Those with whom he danced were in a state of serious sin. And do you know why he failed to ask you? It was owing to the scapular, which you did not yet. You did well not to lay aside and which your devotion to Mary impelled you to wear as your safeguard. So, yes, the brown scapular has a protection against even the demonic that our lady protect you from the demonic and that the devil was real, guys. The devil is there prowling about the world like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers and principalities, against the devil. 
So we have to be prepared. And the brown scapular is a devotion that we have that Our Lady will protect us, that she will keep us from, um, from falling into the sin, falling into sin if we have devotion to it. But as I keep saying, the brown scapular is not a magic charm that if you die um, with a brown scapular, you will still go to hell if you are a obstinate sinner. And so, um, but yet Our Lady is faithful to her promise. So St. Cloud uh, tells a story of a man who tried to drown himself three times and he was, uh, he was rescued against his will. And so on his uh, third time, he realized that he was wearing his scapular. And so perhaps that was why he was uh, being saved over and over again. So he was determined to take his own life. And so he tore the scapular from his neck and leaped into the water without Mary's protective garment. And he accomplished his wish. He died in his sins. So the brown scapular, Our Lady will allow you to to leave that, that devotion, to get rid of it, to cast it away, and to dwell in your sin. But there has been no devotion. There has been no devotion that has been confirmed by so numerous authentic miracles than the brown scapular. So there has been hundreds of miracles in favor of the brown scapular. Now, you often hear from people that you can wear a uh, brown scapular metal uh, to replace the cloth brown scapular. Now, I'm here to tell you that that is a bad idea to not wear the metal brown scapular, not because it's wrong or that it's bad or anything like that. It was approved by St. Pius X that people can wear the brown sca- the scapular metal Um, for people living in places like the Amazon where the humidity is in the heat is so intense that it, uh, that the brown scapular just falls apart over time very quickly, uh, or people who have medical problems and can't wear it for some reason that they can replace it with the metal. But I just want to let you know, there has been zero miracles associated with the metal scapular, but there has been hundreds upon hundreds of miracles in favor of the cloth scapular. So, while it is valid and Our Lady's promises are still valid because um, she would never go against uh, her son's vicar. Yet it seems as though there, the miracles that are associated with the brown scapular are only for the cloth scapular and not with the metal scapular. And so while the promise of uh, salvation at the end of their life may still be true with devotion to the metal scapular, the miracles, uh, tons of miracles that have been associated with the brown scapular, I must implore you to wear the brown scapular, especially if there's no good reason for you to wear it. If there's no good reason for you to replace it with the metal scapular, I encourage you, please wear the, the cloth scapular that Our Lady has given so, so many promises to it to please wear that uh, as a devotion. And so the brown scapular, and so if you, if you have to, you keep multiples of it, keep one in your pocket. So when yours breaks, you can put on another one or just keep a bunch of them at home. I have uh, four or five in my drawer. So just in case mine breaks or one at somebody I know there's breaks, I can go and get them a new one uh, in less than 24 hours. The brown scapular is an important devotion. I also keep a lot of cheap ones. So if a push comes to shove, I can get a cheap one and give it to someone or have it for myself if something happens and mine breaks or I lose mine for some reason. Um, But I also have a pretty high quality one that I wear um, because I don't want to keep replacing it over and over again. So the one I'm wearing currently uh, was about $9, uh, which is pretty expensive for a piece of cloth. Um, but it is very high quality. It's well stitched together. So it's not breaking apart. I've had it for almost nine months now and it hasn't fallen apart. Um, and so having one like that is a huge plus. So I don't have to worry about it. Um, and I also am able to shower with it because it's such high quality. So I don't take it off to shower. Um, though they, some say that you can take it off to shower. Um, though I don't take it off to shower because I'm like, I can wear it while I shower. It's not a big deal though. I know someone, uh, someone I know wears, uh, has two he wears one normally. And then when he takes a shower, he actually has one that he wears when he showers. So he takes off one and puts on the other. Um, I don't know why you would do that. Sounds, uh, I guess if you like 
don't want to have a soggy scapula, you can just replace it. I don't know. But that's also an option. So yes, you can take it off if you need to like go swimming or go shower. Uh, my recommendation is get a high quality one that you can actually shower with and that it won't fall apart in the shower or have multiple ones that one that you wear when you go swimming, one that you wear when you shower something like that. Like I said, you can get them for very, very cheap. Um, or you can, you can buy them in bulk. You can, um, have people that churches give them out all the time. I know if you have a Legion of Mary at your parish, they have tons of them. They'll give them to you for free. Just ask. But, uh, let me talk about the requirements to have, to have this great privilege of the Brown scapular. And so there are three requirements to have the Sabatine privilege. The Sabatine privilege is a promise given uh, to, I think it was Pope John the 22nd. He was given a vision by Our Lady of a Sabatine privilege that Our Our Lady would come to purgatory and take you uh, to heaven on the first Saturday uh, after your death. So... Uh, to in order to receive the promises that are associated with the brown scapular, you must accomplish three things. One, you must be enrolled in the brown scapular con- confraternity once. So you don't have to do it over and over again. If yours breaks, you don't have to get it blessed. You don't have to be re-enrolled. You just put it on because the enrollment is for you and the brown scapular confraternity and not your individual brown scapular. So when yours breaks, you should dispose of it irreverently, uh, burying it or burning it to ash. And then you can put on any other brown scapular and, it, and you're good to go. And so even if you have fallen away and you were enrolled years ago and you haven't worn it in years, all you have to do is put it back on, kiss it, and you are good to go. Um, the second thing is to be pure in observing the sixth and ninth commandments. The sixth and ninth commandments are the those of purity, those against adultery and fornication. So um, let me read from you 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13 through 20. But the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Now God hath both raised up the Lord, and will raise up also his by his power. Know you not and know you not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. Or know you not that he who is joined to a harlot is made one uh, is made one body? For they shall be, saith he, two in one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Fly fornication. Every sin that a man doth is with, his, is with the body, is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Or know you not that your members are the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you, whom you have from your God, uh, and you are not your own. For you are brought with a great price. And glorify and bear God in your body. This is to say that the uh, that our bodies are important and that we have to be uh, faithful to our Lord by not committing fornication, by not committing adultery. Because when we fornicate, when we commit adultery, we are made one body with the person that we have fornicated with. Um, and so this is a grave sin uh, that you should go to and repent to. But if you have committed these grave, grave sins, uh, all you have to do is go to confession, have firm am- amendment of life, uh, be sorrowful for your sins, and you are forgiven of your sins. And so number one, you must wear the brown scapular at all times and be enrolled in the brown scapular. Number two, be pure, observing the sixth and ninth commandments. And number three, to pray each day uh, one of three things. You may... Um, Pray the little office in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, which is kind of like a truncated version of the divine office uh, uh, dedicated to Our Lady. Or two, you may pray a five decades of the Holy Rosary, Um, but you have to get permission from your priest in order to replace that with doing the uh, Holy Rosary. So. Uh, just uh, basically just ask your confessor or ask um, the person enrolling you in the brown scapular. Can I say a rosary in replacement for um, doing the office of the Blessed Virgin Mary? Or if you want, you can learn the office of the Blessed Virgin Mary and do that. I personally just do the rosary because I'm already doing the rosary every day. Might as well um, do that. So. Um, the brown scapular must be made of 100% of wool and it must be brown. Uh, you can also have it like black, 
but it's preferably to be brown. It can't be any other color than brown or black. It can be shades between brown and black. Um, so darker brown, lighter brown. Um, but it must be brown or black, 100% wool. It has to be held together by two strings, um, ribbons, cords, or chains. And the actual color of the ribbon, string, or cord, it doesn't actually matter. All that matters is that the two pieces of brown wool that are 100% wool are brown or black. Um, the chain, the string cord can be whatever you want. Um, so the, there's no, there doesn't need to be a picture on the front and back. Most actually do have a picture on the front or back, but it's not necessary. All it needs to be is a brown cloth. Um, and so brown wool, not just any cloth has to be wool, hundred percent wool. Um, and so having the pictures are a great devotion. Mine has pictures. Most people I know has pictures. Some people do have just straight up brown cloths, especially people who are third order Carmelites. And maybe we'll talk about third orders at another time, though. I don't know too much about third orders. Um, so as soon as it breaks, as soon as the string or cord is cut or torn, um, the scapular must be replaced completely. You can't just like retie it together. So the string cord must be one continuous piece of material connecting the two pieces of brown wool with no interruption in the material or string. Um, and so the, though you, uh, don't need to have it reblessed when you replace it, there's nothing wrong with getting it reblessed. They're not going to have like, you're not a grave sin or a sin at all to have it reblessed. So you feel free to do that if you feel comfortable with it. Uh, but here's something to note when Pope John Paul II, when Pope St. John Paul II was shot and operated on in 1981, he told the doctors not to remove the brown scapular he was wearing. Uh, so we should do the same. If we are injured or become ill, we should advise the healthcare workers to not remove the brown scapular for any reason. Uh, the brown scapular is uh, one of the most recommended devotions of the church. So do not remove it under any circumstances. You must wear it all the time. Um, so even if you are having surgery upon you, do not remove your brown scapular. So once you're enrolled, you're enrolled for life and you may resume it at any time. So if you've ever fallen away from your devotion, you may resume your devotion at any time in your life and come back to that great devotion. Uh, so if you were enrolled back at your first communion, like many people are, you do not need to be re-enrolled. Just put on the brown scapular and start your devotion anew. Um, and so St. Simon Stock, to talk about him briefly, he was uh, around at 12, uh, around 1251 is whenever he received the promise of Our Lady of Mount Carmel on July 16th, 1251, which is why we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel on July 16th, which just passed. So uh, he was given this great promise uh, from Our Lady that he would, uh, that um, of the of the salvation of those who wear the brown scapular. And so uh, St. Simon Stock was actually dealing with such a huge problem because he became a Carmelite. And because of his great holiness, um, they made him the, the vicar general of the Carmelite order very, very quickly. And he uh, ends up uh, having to deal with such a, um, conflict within the order because there was a uh, people and the Carmelites were trying to decide whether they should become hermits again, just like they, their tradition uh, was, or to move on and go out into the world and become an order, uh, much like the Dominicans or Franciscans that were around the same time period. And so uh, Our Lady promised St. Simon Stock that the disunity would stop and that she would protect the order. In fact, Our Lady uh, has actually appeared uh, twice at our Lord, at Lady Lords, and at Fatima, um, dressed in the brown scapular, holding the brown scapular. Um, so you know that this is a very important devotion, and that she is encouraging all people to wear the brown scapular, not just the Carmelites. So the um, there is a time, there is a legend, and I uh, bring it up last because the historicity of this uh, account is up in the air. I uh, think that this is true though many historians will disagree, um, but it's a great story. And I think it's confirmed by Our Lady of Fatima that the message of the story is true. So let me tell you a story and then I'll explain uh, why this may not be true and why the, but the message uh, is definitely true, whether or not the historicity of the actual legend is true. So three famous men of God were set on a street in Rome. They uh, met up. It was the is the Holy Father Friar Dominic 
um, busy gathering new recruits for his new religious order, um, the Order of Preachers. And then Brother Francis was there, the friend of birds and beasts, and especially the deer, uh, especially uh, the poor. And and, um, and Brother uh, Angelus, who was the uh, who was invited to Rome from Mount Carmel in Palestine because of his fame as a preacher. Uh, as chance had it, or by divine providence, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, each of the three men met up on the street corner together, and they recognized one another, despite the fact that um, they probably would have never had seen each other before, uh, but they recognized each other immediately by the grace of the Holy Spirit. In the course of their conversations, um, which was recorded by people who are present um, with them, they, they made prophecies to one another. So St. Angelus foretold that this, that St. Francis would, refru- would, would um, receive the stigmata, the wounds of Christ. And St. Dominic said that one day, Brother Angelus, to your order of Carmel, the most blessed Virgin Mary will give a devotion to be known as a brown scapular. And to my order of preachers, she will give a devotion known as the rosary. And one day through the rosary and the scapular, she will save the world. And so this history was suppressed for a while because the idea of the rosary and the scapular saving the world um, seemed foreign. It seemed uh, outrageous at the time. And um, so it was the history was suppressed for a while because of that. And um, the there is a little evidence that they three of them actually met, though I consider this evidence that they actually met. Um, so the but the fact is that the brown scapular and the rosary will save the world. How do I know this? Because Our Lady of Lords, when she appeared to St. Bernadette, uh, she comes as a, uh, wearing the brown scapular, presenting the brown scapular. And what is the Our Lady of Lords? What is her message? What does she always do when she appears? But pray the rosary when she appears. And uh, St. Bernadette, what would she do during the apparitions? Well, she would pray the rosary with Our Lady. Um, so those two things right there are as a message for all people who have witnessed that uh, apparition, who uh, received that message from St. Bernadette. And then again, at Our Lady of Fatima, she appears and gives the brown scapular, holding the brown scapular and presents uh, the Holy Rosary t- and tells the Fatima children to pray the rosary daily. Um, and then in an interview with Sister Lucia, she said the brown scapular was meant for everyone. And so uh, Our Lady of Fatima, what did she promise? She promises that she will save the world with, uh, she will have the conversion of Russia and there'll be peace upon the world. How does this happen? How does this happen? But with the devotions that Our Lady promised here at Fatima. And so um, the message that uh, was history at the 1200s and the early 1200s, around 1217, uh, we see this promise, this promise that was given to um, these great saints that were all here in the corner together, that one day through the rosary and the scapular, she will save the world. Wow. So that message, even if that history is not true, it seems that that message is true because Our Lady of Lords and Our Lady of Fatima have confirmed this message. So we can ignore the history if you don't believe that it's true and just look at the apparitions of Our Lady of Lords and the apparitions that Our Lady of Fatima, especially Fatima, which is one of the greatest miracles that we have to do an entire episode of talking about Our Lady of Fatima and how this was the biggest miracle since the parting of the Red Sea, that more people witnessed the miracle of Fatima than people who witnessed the parting of the Red Sea in the Old Testament. So uh, let me conclude with that, uh, that message of, our, of the brown scapular and of the Holy Rosary. Uh, to go and get the brown scapular, go and get enrolled in the brown scapular. How do I do this, you're asking? How do I become enrolled in the brown scapular? Go to any priest, go online, look up enrollment to the brown scapular, print out the uh, formula of being enrolled in the brown scapular. Go to any priest. Every priest has permission to enroll someone in the brown scapular. Originally, only Carmelite priests could do it, but it was then passed on to all priests. And then now um, the deacons can also do it with permission uh, from a priest. Um, so go up to any priest, go up to any priest that you know and ask them and hand them the, um, 
the text that you have printed off from the internet, uh, go to a Carmelite website and find out the, uh, go to the sisters of, uh, Mount Carmel, um, and find and print out their enrollment prayers. Give it to the priest. Say, father, can you enroll me in the Brown scapular? The priest will say, yes, of course I'll roll you in the Brown scapular. So have your Brown scapular, give it to the priest. The priest will say the prayers over you. Um, the prayers can be said in Latin or in English or in whatever language that you speak, Spanish, anything like that. It doesn't matter. Um, be enrolled. The priest will sprinkle holy water on you and on the brown scapular, and he will put it around you, and you will kiss the brown scapular before he puts it around your neck, and you have been invested. You have been enrolled in the brown scapular, um, and now you have... um, now, and then ask him if you can replace the requirements of the brown scapular with a holy rosary. Um, and now you have been enrolled in the brown scapular. I encourage you to do this ASAP. Do it today. Do it tomorrow as soon as you can. Uh, it does not need to be on the Feast of Mount Carmel. It does not have to be in a specific setting. The ideal would be uh, during the context of the mass, but it can be happen anywhere, anytime. And it does not matter. Uh, so please be enrolled in the brown scapular as soon as possible and pray the rosary every day. Uh, you must pray the rosary every day. The rosary is what will save the church, will save the world, will save your soul. Pray the rosary every single day. Um, then quickly to address any um last minute questions that you may have about the Brown scapular. Um, you can email me at Fonseca production at gmail.com F O N S E C A production at gmail.com. If you have any questions about the Brown scapular, i will be happy to ask, to answer any of those questions you have. Um, and yeah, you can get in contact with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, at my Facebook at Adrian Fonseca, or you can look up Catholic Conversations on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at at F-F-O-N-Z-E. That's at F Fonzi. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, soapboxes, negativities, positivities, or anything in between, you can uh, email me at Fonseca production at gmail.com. And don't forget to share this podcast with someone that you know. Share it with someone you want to be enrolled in the Brown Scapular, or maybe you have had a devotion to the Brown Scapular for a long time, or you know people who wear it, and you want them to know what is up with this whole Brown Scapular thing. Why is this important? What do I need to do? Share it with them. Uh, Share this with them so that they can uh, know more about the Brown Scapular, know more about Our Lady of Mount Carmel, that she uh, may move in our lives and have so many miracles. Um, If we would only just wear the Brown Scapular and have devotion to it. So as usual, I want to close out with a Hail Mary, but I also want to close out with the prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So we will start with the sign of the cross, uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, most beautiful flower of Mount Carmel, fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, blessed mother of the Son of God, immaculate virgin, assist me this my necessity. O oh, star of the sea, help me and show me herein you are my mother. O Holy Mary, Mother of God, Queen of heaven and earth, I humbly beseech you from the bottom of my heart to succor me in this necessity. There are none that you can withstand that can withstand your power. O show me herein, you are my mother. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O show me herein, you are my mother. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O oh, show me herein, you are my mother. O oh, Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Sweet mother, I place this cause in your hands. Sweet mother, I place this cause in your hands. Sweet mother, I place this cause in your hands. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, you